Hey friends, today we are going to be flipping some of my most recent finds with milk paint. First project today, I got this adorable little cabinet for free. Yes, you're adorable too. <laughs> from an estate sale clean out. Um, Ashley from Rockwood Estate Sales lets me come and pick all of the stuff that's left over. And I am thinking this was probably made for like tissues or... Yeah, probably tissues. <laughs> so we're gonna give it a fun coat of milk paint. This would be adorable in a bathroom or whatever kind of storage you would like to use it for. You gonna help me? You gonna help? <laughs> what color should we do? First step today, I'm going to be using some of the Sweet Pickens Crackle Medium. This is a product that you're going to put on before your final coat of paint. Now I'm just gonna do one nice thick coat of milk paint today because I'm not worried about perfect coverage. So I'm gonna put this straight onto my wood and let it dry for a couple of hours. You can see it's kind of like a glue-like substance. The thicker you apply this, the thicker of a crackle texture you're gonna get. I like to spread mine out very, very, very thin and get that smaller, fine crackle finish. Feel free to play around and do what you like best. A little scrap wood project would be a great place to start if you're new to milk paint. And I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. I did kind of cover the whole top there because that will be seen a lot. And now I'm just gonna go in in a few random places. Mixing up the milk paint is easy. Here I've got a quarter cup of warm water. I like to use warm, I think it helps it mix better. And then I'll do a quarter cup of milk paint. This is a highly pigmented powder. So that's why I'm making sure I'm working over a drop cloth today. Now we're gonna mix it up. I've got my very official fork here. <laughs> if you want an extra smooth, perfect milk paint finish, make sure you use something like an immersion blender. I don't mind a little bit of clumps in my paint because that's gonna help when I go to distress, um, get some good chippy finish. Right, so I'm not gonna use any extra bond. Extra bond is the additive that helps your milk paint stick if you have a slick surface, but this wood is older and dry so it will soak this milk paint up beautifully. I'm using my Klingon brush here. This is an F30. I like using my Klingons with the milk paint because they're really easy to clean. The milk paint is a little harder to get out of your brushes than the DIY paint. It's not a uh, water soluble like the DIY paint is. It didn't get quite as crackly as some of the pieces I've done before. I think it's because uh, it is on the raw wood, but I did get a little bit. So we are going to roll with it. I'm gonna do a little stenciling on this piece to make it a little more fun, get it all distressed and waxed. took the piece to my garage to give it a sanding. I used 120 grit around the edges for a good distressing and then I took a 220 grit around the entire piece. Since I only used one coat of paint it gave me a beautiful chippy finish. If you'd like less of your wood to show through a couple of coats of paint would provide less distressing. I'm going to use a section of one of my very favorite Jamie Ray Vintage stencils. They are nice and thick. I have used this one many times and it is still in excellent condition. And to make it super easy, I'm gonna use DIY Cottage Color. This is a one-step paint, so no need to get too fancy and have to seal this or worry about it smearing. I have got my one and a half inch stencil brush, which is going to make this job super easy and quick. I've got a little bit of paint on my brush and I offload most of that paint onto a paper towel. My goal is to have very little paint, a very dry brush as I'm stenciling. That's gonna give me the most crisp image possible.
I love how you can mix and match stencils. Don't forget, you don't have to use it exactly as is. Use tiny sections of it, pull out a different one, and always change up the look. Look how nice that came out. Now, I am usually never worried about a perfect stenciling anyway, because y'all know I love my distressed look. I have 320 grit sandpaper here, so it's very, very fine grit. And I give it just a little antiquing. Now to finish this piece up, I have got my Sweet Pickens Dark Beeswax. This is a lovely wax. It's a lot thicker than the DIY wax, but I love it over natural wood. I put it over the black paint, over the stenciling and get it all to blend and you can see how it's going to darken up that natural wood tone too to kind of make it i don't know more appealing with the black paint in my opinion if you'd like to layer this wax you can do that as well let it dry for 24 48 hours in between in between coats and you can build up the coverage To freshen up the inside, I'm going to be using a little bit of hemp oil. This is food safe if you're wanting to use it on a kitchen project, but it also is just going to freshen up this wood beautifully. What would you use this piece to store? I think it would be really cute with paintbrushes sticking out of the top and paint on the inside and the cabinets. You know, use your imagination. It could be anything you'd like. I love how it came out. Nice and antique looking, industrial with the stenciling on the side. To purchase any of the paint and products I'm using today or any of my flips, head on over to my website, upcycledbybrie.com. For my next project, we are going to take these corbels that I bought. They are just raw wood, very plain, and we're going to make them look beautiful and old and chippy. We're going to play with some fun colors. I have a DIY Bohemian Blue, which is this gorgeous blue teal, and I also have Mint Chip. Say no more. Beautiful mint. I have mixed two of those together to make this beautiful duck egg color. And to make this paint thicker, I added a couple of drops of the DIY paint frosting. Literally, when you read the directions, look, 0.2 to 0.6 percentage of your paint. So just a couple of drops in this little tiny bit of paint. Look how beautiful and thick it has made this paint, just like frosting. So now we are going to take it, layer it on to some sections on these corbels and let that dry overnight. I'm using a little artist spatula here and randomly placing all three colors along the corbels. I do work carefully and make sure that I don't smush down the texture when I flip them over and do the other side. There's no rhyme or reason here. It's going to look a little crazy in the beginning, but stick with me. And look how much texture you can build up with this paint frosting. But it's not peaky. It doesn't look like little mountains. It's not pokey. It's flat, which looks like layers and layers of paint. I let these dry overnight and you can see this paint frosting is hard as a rock. It's not going anywhere, but it does need time to dry. So don't rush this part of the process. Both of them are done on all the sides. Now I'm going to go in with a bit of the Sweet Pickens Crackle Medium. You'll want to apply this before your final coat of paint. The thicker you apply it, 
the thicker the crackle is going to be. If you spread this really thin, you're not going to get as much crackle like you saw in that first project. My crackle medium has dried for a couple of hours. It is time for the next step. We are going to be painting these in Sweet Pickens Haberdash. It's this beautiful, like kind of neutral gray, taupey, grayish color. And it's going to neutralize these, but some of these beautiful pops of green are gonna come through and make these look very old and chippy. Got a quarter cup of warm water here. And then I will add a quarter cup of milk paint. And if you're new around here, I do recommend the Klingon brushes when you're using the milk paint. They are really easy to clean. I'll just pop it into a cup of water overnight and the next morning they'll rinse clean. The milk paint is a little trickier to get out of your brush than the DIY paint. So keep that in mind. I just use my DIY brushes with the DIY paint and my Klingons with my milk paint personally. For my projects today, I am just doing one nice thick coat of milk paint. I wasn't worried about 100% exact full coverage on any of today's projects. There have been pieces of furniture that I've done with milk paint where I'm doing multiple coats because I really want a more smooth, consistent full coverage. But that's the great thing about milk paint is it does provide many different finishes. And here's a look once they're dry. The crackle medium showed up this time. You can really see the teal and the mint popping through the gray finish, and I am in love. Time to take them down and distress. I started with my orbital sander. I've got 220 grit sandpaper on here, and I'm just kind of knocking down some of the thicker texture. I want it to look like layers of paint, not necessarily tall peaks of texture. You might need to go in with some sandpaper and hand sand around the spindles a little bit. I tried not to get too much texture built up around them and more so around the flat surfaces. What are y'all thinking so far? I know it started off a little crazy, but in the end, it turns out just beautiful. I'm loving this color combination. I know it's a little different than what I normally do. To seal them up, I'm gonna be using that same Sweet Pickens Hemp Oil, I had it out. It's so easy to apply around all of the curves on these spindles, and it's not gonna change the color of the paint. I didn't want a dark wax or anything too harsh on these corbels. And here is the final look. I am in love. Boho Blue, Mint Chip, a couple of my favorite colors, and this milk paint color is probably one of my new favorites as well, which is surprising for a gray, but I am in love. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this corbel makeover. I have cut down all of these spindles, and I am going to be making ornaments to go in the swag bags for the for the love of junk weekend if y'all haven't heard about that yet let me tell you a little bit more september 15th through the 17th 2023 it's right around the corner y'all less than two weeks away but we do have just a bit of room left on the party bus so if y'all have a last minute decision to make i suggest you do it now i'll drop the link for the event down in the description box below but unicorn dust designs Sammy and myself are hosting a weekend event. We are going to start Friday night off with a meet and greet here in Olathe, Kansas at a really fun restaurant. We'll get to know each other, ask questions, and gear up for Saturday where we pick y'all up on a party bus bright and early and go thrifting. We're gonna have some fun challenges, do a little bit of thrifting together, and find some great items to take back to the Lewisburg market to flip. Sammy and I will provide all of the supplies you will need to flip your finds, and they are going to be amazing. I just know it. You'll learn some fun techniques from us. There's some swag bags with handmade items from Sammy and myself, plus, Anyone who buys a ticket is entered to win a Cricut Maker 3. 
which is almost the equivalent to the cost of the ticket. So much fun. So thanks to Cricket. But if y'all haven't checked out the event, be sure to do so. We're going to wrap up Sunday at Sammy's house if y'all don't have to catch a flight home early or anything. But if you have the time, come over. We'll have a little barbecue and say goodbye to wrap up the weekend. Make memories, make new friends, learn new techniques, laugh. Oh my gosh, we are going to have so much fun. <laughs> I went lazy. But if y'all want to check out more about the event, I will drop it down below. I need to go wrap up these ornaments. I had extra haberdash left over from the corbels, so I went ahead and did a couple of sets of the ornaments in this milk paint color as well. I did add some of the crackle medium to just a few because I wanted them all to look a little different. A little sanding and distressing on these as well and I will take them upstairs to finish them up. I have DIY clear wax and some of the DIY making powder which is a fun pigment powder. You can use it several different ways. Today I am just sprinkling it on top of the wax. I just gave them all one quick coat of wax using a chip brush and I like to use my fingers with the making powders. You have to be careful because some of them are more pigmented than others. But this New Year's Eve just gives them a nice little shine. I also used a little bit of Golden Rule, which is a beautiful gold gilding wax. I love the combination of the haberdash and the Golden Rule together. We'll simply drill a hole in the top and screw in an eye hook. I chose gold eye hooks. I thought those would feel appropriate for the holiday season. I can drop those in my Amazon shop down below. And then a little bit of jute. You could use wire, anything you love. And I love mixing these in with vintage glass ornaments on your Christmas tree. The combination of the wood and the glass is simply beautiful. I have them displayed here on a cute little tree, but drop me a comment. Let me know what y'all think about this idea. Y'all know what to do. If you love today's flip video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and send it over to a friend who hasn't discovered the wonderful world of milk paint quite yet. Also, don't forget to follow and subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss any new content. And until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends.